And hello, everyone, and welcome to Today with Dr. Beverly Emery. I'm Chris Runge. Thanks so much for being with us. Lots to talk about today, including a big conference for all employees in the school system that's coming up later this summer. We'll talk and see more about that coming up in just a bit. But first of all, welcome again, Dr. Emery. Thank you. Glad to be here. Can't believe it's May. I can't. I was getting ready to say we're almost there. It's a little scary how fast it goes. It really does go fast. You've had a busy week. Yesterday you were at what, what we're calling the State of the Community Meeting for Winston-Salem, where um, we really want to have the city in five years in a position to be a top competitor for jobs. What was it like and what did you have to say? It was very interesting. I had a lot of fun um, mm -hmm. sitting on a panel. I learned some things, which was really neat. Um, it was good to be the last speaker because I could sort of weave that economic development, economy, social issues, mm -hmm. arts um, into um, uh, schools and the fact that we sort of are the beginning and the and the feeder pattern for that, right? We we accept everything in public schools that's going on in the community, and we try to help educate kids no matter what they bring to school. Um, but how important the interdependency of our agencies really is to our community being a top community, and um, so um, heavily the responsibility here that that we produce um, students who can enter that job market or go on to higher ed and can, can stay here and contribute and be um, able to take some of those jobs that are um, good paying jobs that really do exist right here in Winston-Salem. I was also really excited that um, the, t the standing room only and for it mm -hmm. to be a first uh, event and we not really have an idea of exactly what that would look like. It was very nice to see how many people uh, turned out for it. You said something really interesting. It was very complimentary of Winston-Salem that in your 35 years in education, this is the one community that doesn't blame the schools for all of the bad that's going on? <laughs> it's, it's a really interesting thing to me, having worked in several states and um, districts. Generally, it's, it's kind of common practice or easy to blame the schools for kids that can't read or for you know a whole host of issues that are true but aren't necessarily just the school's mm -hmm. um, responsibility and I just think Winston-Salem and Forsyth County are unique in this ownership this you know cultural and community ownership of our issues and the mindset here to me is more about what do we need to do to fix it versus who did this mm -hmm. or why is it I mean I think people understand the factors that contribute to where we are and the idea here is let's let's do something about it so um, in that regard I, I feel like this is um, a place that we have the capacity to, to actually do something about it. Well we've done it before and I thought that that was uh, pretty interesting that Gail Anderson pointed out that our biggest employers now are nonprofits, the school system, the hospitals and you know when I grew up it was Piedmont Airlines and Haynes and Reynolds and it's a very very different makeup now in this city. Well, and I think the city, and, and of course the county as well, but in, in particular the whole downtown focus, that ability to reinvent yourself mm -hmm. is really, I think, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, as you say, to come from that commercial, industrial, sort of grassroots and figure out how do we reinvent that in a way that benefits um, you know, growth and economy and job production as well as our community as a whole, I think is, is really uh, pretty uniquely um, architected, I guess mm -hmm. I would say. And so uh, I'm excited about that and the potential, particularly for us as, as, as a district that has magnet schools and is exploring uh, mm -hmm. additional ones. You know, how do we connect those dots and figure out are there uh, future employability or innovation or arts related um, biotech things that that we could help kids be more prepared to go into that market at the same time attracting folks um, you know, more into the urban parts of, of Winston. Say what you will about Winston-Salem. It's been kicked a lot of times, but it keeps getting back up. I mean, it's an incredibly resilient community, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So, um, obviously, job growth, mean, job growth means that we're going to need more teachers and fill <laughs> some positions. Uh, that's something that's not easy to do. What's the plan to bring in more teachers and to fill these positions? 
Well, I wish I had the magic bullet for exactly what that would be. I think we have uh, several uh, strategies underway um, a week from this Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, May 16th is a big job fair recruitment. Um, we will also look at transfer uh, as a part of that, but we hope that a real concerted effort to recruit for all jobs in our in our district uh, will help us with recruitment. We haven't done this in a while, and so it will be interesting to see if that if that helps. Um, I think our, our focus on recruitment and retention is also um, sort of shifted somewhat to development. So how can we invest in people? We, we can't pay you a whole lot more money, uh, but can we invest in you and help you feel supported and successful in the job you do? And so the Summer Institute, as you mentioned, um, is, is exciting for us as well and an opportunity for all of our staff, not just mm -hmm. people who are new, uh, to um, hone their skills and to learn something. And I think that continuous development then throughout the school year uh, for all for all employees, not just classrooms. I think we will continue to face the challenge of, of filling the classroom. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure we have the perfect solution, but one of the things we do know is that people who feel connected to their workplace and appreciated um, generally um, stay longer mm -hmm. and so I think those are areas all of us can work together on that don't cost us anything. Sure so as Dr. Emery noted if you're watching this before May 16th or even the morning of the 16th big job fair coming up and uh, all the details are running on cable too and all of the jobs that we have are posted on our website um, that link is on cable too as well and, and we have lots of them so be sure yes, to check and that Chris, out. Yes and Chris if I could we mm -hmm. talk so much about the classroom but um, I would really like to put a plug in for bus drivers. Mm -hmm. We are in critical need of bus drivers and it is a very tough job. Our drivers do a remarkable job every day, um, but we have run all year some almost 40 positions short and it has um, greatly impacted our ability to get kids to school on time and help them be productive in the classroom. And so if you're out there and you are uh, uh, retired fireman, uh, mm. you drove for a city route or for Winston-Salem State, um, we would really love to work with you. Uh, we have options. We can make part-time options. We can work with people's schedules. Uh, please contact our transportation department or come to the fair. Uh, we will be working aggressively to recruit bus drivers as well. And we'll put a link for that up on cable too as well. Uh, speaking of driving, state funding for the driver's education education program is set to run out on July 1, which really surprised me. I guess I sort of took it for granted when I was in high school that it was just there. But that could put a big burden on parents to pay for private training. We're trying to stop that. We're, we're trying to keep the funding going. Where do we stand and what would it mean if we lost it? It's been a very interesting evolution, um, driver's ed. So we uh, we started the political season, understanding that uh, the funding well it was wiped out, and we also operate under uh, caps. Mm -hmm. uh, by l current language for what fees we can pass on to parents. So we can't charge more than $65 when our cost right now is about $230 to $250 per student. And with the loss of those funds, that's yet more um, things we have to reduce to figure out how do we pay for driver's ed. So our message um, to the legislature loud and clear was, you know, do one of two things. Either eliminate it from public schools, which isn't ideal, um, and put it back in the private sector and let everybody figure out how they're going to get it. If you're going to leave it in the public schools, you have to fund it, you know, uh, or make those fees um, either allow, allow us to, to charge the fees to families or make those fees um, more reasonable. Uh, we don't have the dollars to offset the difference. Uh, so the last um, iteration of this is that there has been a bill proposed 
to increase fees for us drivers. Um, I think one's a license tag fee, um, and there's an, so all of those come through the Department of Motor Vehicles. But there is there is language that seems to be getting traction out there that in fact would fund driver's education as we know it, so it would stay in public schools and there would be a revenue stream to fund it, other than a small fee, that 45 to 65 that we've, we've charged. Um, but whether that passes or not, you know, we don't know. So we are in limbo hmm. on what happens um, if we don't have a budget by July 1. Hopefully we will and we'll be able to communicate. We have been letting parents know about the sort of precarious nature of, of this whole scene. Um, so, you know, I, I think that schools, because we bid and we go out for contract, could provide this at a better cost, a more affordable cost to families than if it's just left into the private sector. But, um, it, you know, bottom line for me is if we don't have the funding, I hope we aren't required to offer it. And I know that doesn't make people happy, but driver's ed is not the central part of our mission sure. as a school system. And so it's just just not one of those things that we need to be dipping into our dollars when we have so many other needs if the state doesn't support it. Sure. Finally, talking about the budget, um, our budget director, Carrie Crutchfield, who is the best of the best, <laughs> absolutely, said this budget has a lot of unknowns. What did he mean by that? We enter this budget season, um, in fact today, our day of recording this, I will present our budget to the county commissioners this afternoon, and probably more so than any other time, and Kerry, you know, wrote the book on budgets, so he's been around uh, dealing with budgets for, for a long time. Um, trying to put together what you need and what your revenue will be to cover your needs has been incredibly challenging because of all the unknown. So, you know, it's um, early May and we have only the governor's budget put out there. We have no idea what the House will come back with, much less a Senate reaction to it. Um, we are not sure of our federal funding. We still haven't gotten our allotments and there's been rumors of reductions in federal dollars. Um, actually, the local knowns uh, are better than projected. So the one piece of good news in this is that uh, we have a little better forecast locally. Uh, but so many things that impact our budget um, and we have a statutory um, requirement to have a budget and we work with the county to meet theirs are, are riding on these other two uh, arenas, state and federal, for which we have huge question marks. Um, added to that, in the past we have received projections or allotments, um, those uh, sort of roadmaps that help us hire teachers uh, because we can't wait mm -hmm. until July to hire teachers. Uh, the state has always used an enrollment growth uh, formula and a three-year averaging process for that so that typically in March we get projected allotments from the state and it allows us to get ahead of the hiring season it allows us to tell schools how many teachers they're going to have etc etc and in last year's um, session of the General Assembly they removed the projected enrollment growth now they didn't take it away. They said they wanted to wait and see in the fall mm -hmm. if it material. You know, so instead of a projection, let's fund based on actual students. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work really well for us in this business because in September, October, if you if you're growing, you know, it's not great for kids to you, you get. Right. Our, I think people can see that scenario. So in the governor's budget, he restores the enrollment uh, projection and there is there is positive discussion in both the House and the Senate to put that back that that perhaps they didn't understand the full impact of it last year when it was removed but because no action has been taken we're still operating you know in a in a question mark um, situation and so that impacts everybody mm -hmm. it impacts our ability to give schools 
a planning allotment, um, and it impacts schools' ability to prepare and hire teachers. And as we just talked about in a competitive market, you know, everybody wants to be hiring now uh, so that they have a, a good choice in the candidate pool or that there are even candidates. You know, in some places, if you don't, if you aren't getting those positions now and before school is out, you may not have people to fill them on down the road. So a lot of question marks. And um, I think this is where, again, we are blessed to have experienced people um, who have, have trended budgets for a lot of years and so um, we trust their assumptions in terms of where we are and we've been rather conservative about our allotments so um, our message to schools has been we can add people uh, but it's hard if we employ them on a contract sure. if we don't need them then we're we're in a, a bad spot financially so this is the, the timing cycles are not unusual. Um, we always have to have our budget to the commissioners before we actually have a state budget, and they're very gracious to understand that. But the the inability to plan um, has been, uh, uh, you know, and I mean just little simple things like we talked about driver's ed. Sure. You know, if that turns out in July um, not to be funded but required, we don't have you know, a magic bucket sitting out there. So, so that means going back and making shifts in our own budget to figure out how we provide those those services to kids and families. So much goes into it. So much more than just what goes into your household budget and your checkbook and... A little overwhelming at times, uh, yeah. but as I said, that's why we're blessed to have someone who's done this for so long and teaches the course. Sure. Uh, at least to help us uh, make the right assumptions because at this point it really is take your best guess and you know ride that horse uh, until you really have a known in terms of what your revenue is going to be. Wow. So board meeting next week so I'm sure you'll report to them on Tuesday evening about what happens this afternoon at the commissioners. And right. Today is really just a presentation <clears throat> and then the, they have a really good process I think throughout the rest of the month that they do workshops and really dive into all of our county needs and um, they're, they're very welcoming of us to participate in that as well if there are questions or concerns. Mm -hmm. But um, our formula that we agreed two years ago with, with the county um, looks good for us this year. So we're, we're glad that there's that big piece of good news locally. Good. Well, good luck. Thank we'll you. talk to you one more time before summer. We'll talk yes. to you in about a month. Okay? Very good. Thanks. Right. We are back right after this with a big opportunity for employees in the school system coming up this summer. Stay with us. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. 
understood.org, because understanding is everything. The Collaborative Learning Conference is a big deal here in the school system. It's coming up in August. We put together a video presentation about what it's all about, and you can be a part of it. Take a look. What does it take for us to work together and reach our district goals in Winston-Salem for Scythe County? Educators dedicated to professional learning. Join us for the 2015 Collaborative Learning Conference at Walkertown Middle and High Schools, where we will empower minds and inspire the future. There are sessions for all employees, from classroom teachers to English as a second language, exceptional children, parent involvement, counselors, psychologists, and administrators. There is something for everyone at the 2015 Collaborative Learning Conference. Why is it that educating children in America has become so hard? And the longer I think about it, the longer I work at it, the more I realize we have made this much more difficult than it should be. They're thirsty. They're hungry for affection, for attention, for knowledge, for information, for discipline, for structure, all of these things. And when teachers sit in the seat of instruction, you have the opportunity not just to impart that content knowledge, but to teach so many other life skills that oftentimes fall through the cracks. Our focus is on uh, drilling into the research, uh, what teachers and school leaders typically don't have time to do. We drill into the research to identify what can um, be most successful in our schools that serve high poverty kids. What are the, the, the highest impact strategies? And then we try to take those strategies out into the schools to share them with teachers and with school leaders. And again, the CLC is coming up in August. And we'll have much more about that throughout the summer right here on Cable 2. And that does it for today with Dr. Beverly Emery. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll look for you again one more time this school year in June. Until then, I'm Chris Runge. We'll see you again.